Well, investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch reported back in March that in order to defeat Hezbollah, the Lebanese government supported Sunni militant groups, the same ones they're fighting today. Seymour Hirsch joins us now live from Washington. Thanks for being with us. What is the source of the financing, according to your reporting, of these groups such as Fatah al-Islam in these camps of uh, Nahar al-Barit, for instance? Where are they getting the money? Where are they getting the arms? A key player is, are the Saudis, of course, and Bandar. What I was writing about was a sort of a, a, a private agreement that was made between uh, the White House. We're talking about Richard Dick Cheney and Elliot Abrams, who's one of the key aides in the White House, with Bondar. And the idea was to get support, uh, covert support money from the uh, Saudis to support various uh, uh, hardline jihadist Sunni groups, uh, particularly in Lebanon, who would be seen in case of an actual confrontation with Hezbollah, the Shia group in the southern Lebanon, would be seen as, a, as an asset. As simple as that. So the Senora government, in order to counter the influence of Hezbollah in Lebanon, would be covertly, according to your reporting, funding groups like Fatah al-Islam that they're having issues with right now? Unintended consequences once again, yes. And so if Saudi Arabia and the Senora government are doing this, whether it's unintended or not, therefore it has, the, the United States must have uh, something to say about it or not? Well, the United States was deeply involved. This was a covert operation that Bondar ran with us. And don't forget, if you remember, uh, uh, you know, we got into the war in Afghanistan with, with supporting Osama bin Laden, the Mujahideen back there in the, in the late 1980s with Bondar. Uh, and with people like Elliot Abrams around, the idea being that the, the Saudis promised us they could control they could control the jihadists. So we spent a lot of money and time, the United States in the late 1980s, uh, using and supporting the jihadists to, to help us beat the Russians in Afghanistan, and they turned on us. And we have the same pattern, not as if you know there's any lessons learned. It's the same pattern, using the Saudis again to support jihadists, the, the Saudis assuring us they can control these various groups, the Salafis and others, the groups like the one that we're in a, that's, uh, that's in contact right now uh, in Tripoli with, with the government. Sure, but the Mujahideen in the 80s was one era. Have the Americans, why would it be in the best interest of the United States of America right now to indirectly, even if it is indirect, empower these jihadi movements that are extremists, that fight to the death in these Palestinian camps? Doesn't it go against the interests not only of the Senora government, but also of America in Lebanon right now? No. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. The jihadist groups in Lebanon were also there to go after Nasrallah, Hezbollah. Hezbollah, which if you remember last year, defeated Israel, whether or not the Israelis want to acknowledge it. And so you have in Hezbollah a major threat to the American... Uh, th look, the American role is very simple right now. Condoleezza Rice, the Secretary of State, has been very articulate about it. We're in the business now of supporting the Sunnis anywhere we can against the Shia, against the Shia in Iran, against the Shia in Lebanon, that is Nasrallah, etc. Uh, mm -hmm. Against uh, So the game is really, uh, as, as you could call it, almost the Arabic word is fitna, civil war. We're in a business, business right now of creating, in some places, Lebanon and particularly a sectarian violence. But the Bush administration, of course, officials would disagree with that. So would the senior government. They're openly pointing the finger at Syria, saying this is an offshoot of a Syrian group, uh, Fatah al-Islam is. It's getting its arms. Where else would it get its arms from if not Syria? is the question they'll ask. Uh, you have to answer this question if that's true. That Syria, which is very close and criticized greatly by the Bush administration for being very close to Hezbollah, would also be supporting groups, uh, Salafist groups, that are very hostile to Hezbollah. That doesn't make any sense. The logic of that just breaks down. What it is, very simply, it was, it was a covert program we joined in with the, with the Saudis. Uh, as part of a bigger, broader program of, of uh, doing everything we could to stop the spread of uh, the Shia, the Shia world, and uh, it just simply it bit us in the rear, as it's happened before. Sure, but if it doesn't make any sense for Syria to be supporting these Salafist groups in these camps, why would it make any sense for the U.S. to, su to indirectly, of course, the support is according to your reporting, by giving a billion dollars in aid, part of it military, to the Senora government? And if that aid is dispensed in a way that the Senora government and the U.S. is not controlling going to extremist groups, then indirectly the United States, according to this article you wrote, would be supporting these Group. So why would that be in its best interest, and what should it do now, according to what the people you've spoken to? You know, uh, Hala, you're assuming logic by the United States government, but that's okay. We'll, we'll forget that one right now. Basically, it's a very simple. These groups are seen, and when I was in Beirut doing interviews for this, I talked to senior officials of the Senora government who acknowledged that the reason we, they were tolerating 
the radical jihadist groups, like the one in action in Tripoli now, was because they were seen as a protection against Hezbollah. The, the fear of Hezbollah in Washington, particularly in the White House, is acute. They just simply believe that uh, Hassan Nasrallah is uh, absolutely intent on waging war here in America and is capable of doing it. Whether that's true or not is another question. But there's a supreme, absolutely overwhelming fear of Hezbollah. And we do not want Hezbollah to play an active role in the government of Lebanon. And that's been our policy, basically, which is to support the Senora government, despite its weakness, against the coalition that's uh, not only Senora, but a uh, um, uh, Mr. Aoun, the, uh, the, the former mil military leader of, uh, of Lebanon. They're, they're in a coalition that we absolutely abhor. All right, Seymour Hirsch of the New Yorker magazine, investigative journalist there. Thanks so much for joining us there. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to speak a little bit in a few months' time when those developments uh, take shape in Lebanon and we know more. Thanks very much, Seymour. Glad okay. to talk to you.